Welcome back to Quantum Code, I'm Martin. This is the sixth tutorial of the series dedicated to create an original 2D shooter game in Godot Engine. A link to the full playlist is in the description, so check it out. In this tutorial, we will improve our enemy movement so it will be less predictable. The goal is to turn this into this. Let's go! Back in Godot, let's first open the enemy scene. We want to modify the script as we want to modify the behavior of the enemy. Let me just first write down the code and I'll explain to you the details because we are using a little bit of mathematics and vectors, but it will be easy, don't be afraid. First, we'll need two new constants, one called force, let's set it to 0 0.5, and one called delta, and let's set it to 0 0.2. Now we'll also need a second variable named behavior and it will be a vector2. Now what we want to do is to give each enemy a different behavior. So we'll use random functions to create different kind of movement for each enemy. Let's go. So in ready first we want to call randomize. Then let's create a variable called theta equal to rand float and we'll multiply this by 2 times p. After that we want to create a variable named ampl for amplitude and it will be equal to 1 plus random float minus like random float minus 0 0.5 times delta and then times force then we can set our behavior variable so behavior equal vector 2 we'll set cos theta and sines theta and we'll multiply by the, the variable amplitude. Now, under the physics process function, we will keep our variable two player. So our enemy will still be going um, in the player direction. Then we'll just change the velocity. So we, we keep the two player part and we add our behavior. So that's the behavior of this enemy. So each enemy will have a different one. And we will still multiply by speed. So this will be the speed of each enemy. And we just need to normalize this new vector. Now I just want to make you change one little detail uh, compared to last time we, we implemented the enemy. We use move and collide with velocity times delta. And I think in this case, it is better to use move and slide as when the enemy will collide with from like the borders or a wall in the middle or something, it is better for the enemy to slide. Like it will have a better behavior. So let's just do move and slide with the velocity. And we don't need to multiply by delta with this function. So let's just delete this or I'll comment it in my case. Now let me explain exactly what I did on those parts, the ready and the physics process. Let me explain you this code using drawings. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a random angle. So we call it theta. And let's say we have zero and pi. This will be equal to two pi. So we have, we are creating a random angle between zero here and two times pi. So it will, it can be any angle like this one, or it can be also all the way around to here. So for the example, it will be random. Just notice that rand f is giving a value between zero and one. So for the example, let's take a random theta. We'll take it like that. For the behavior vector, let's say we have x here and y here. So in Godot, y is the opposite, but 
it is the same you just have to invert this axis so I'll do it with the Y up here it is more more classic in mathematics so this vector 2 is made up by cos theta and sinus theta so in the X axis it will be cos theta so this is cos theta and in the Y axis this is sinus theta so now you understand the vector will be this one as you can see it is normalized like it could have been also this one or this one or this one but it is always going from 0 to this cycle which has a length, a, a length of 1 here we have 1 1 minus 1 and minus 1 so this vector has a length of 1 so then we will add a little modification of the length this is the amplitude um, variable we multiply by the amplitude so if you would just want to understand how we compute this amplitude so we have a random float which is between 0 and 1 then we do minus 0 0.5 so we have something between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 after that we multiply this value per delta so we have something between minus delta divided by 2 and delta divided by 2 with 0 here after that we just add 1 so our amplitude will be um, between so let's say we have <clears throat> 1 here our amplitude will be between 1 minus delta divided by 2 and 1 plus delta divided by 2 and then we just multiply um, the amplitude by the force so it will create something between our force and our force multiply by 1 plus delta divided by 2 and same but with 1 minus delta divided by 2 so this will create basically a, a value which is equal to a force with some kind of offset so it will be a force plus a little bit something or minus a little bit something and then we multiply our behavior with this amplitude so we add up a little bit of something or we decrease by a little bit of something so the result is the behavior vector and I can I can represent it so for example we can have this one or here if we add up a little bit we will have this one let's say here we will have like the amplitude will be or the yeah the amplitude will be exactly one and here it will be a little bit greater after that for the velocity we just add this behavior we created and so we have a vector two player for example if the player is here and we have our enemy here so the vector 2 player will be this one but we normalized it so it will be only a length of 1 then we add our behavior so for example let's say the behavior is uh, like that the behavior will have a smaller length because the force is 0 0.5 and this is important else it will be more important than the um, um, the player position so here here we take a uh, a small force in order to do not change too much the movement of the enemy we just want to modify it a little bit so the enemy will not go straight forward but it will have a kind of curve like that 
So we added up the two player vector and the behavior vector, which is smaller. And then we normalize this. So for example, here, if I add up the two, it will create something like that. And then I normalize this one. So let's say here. And we do this in order to keep a constant speed for all the enemies. So we don't have enemies going really quick and other going too slow. So we have, we always have a normalized vector here and we can apply the speed there. Now let's test this. I hit play and I wait for some enemies to spawn. Now, as you can already see, they are not moving all the same ways. Like they are following different directions. And so the result is that they are not forming a stacked group, but more, more something looking like a horde. So it is way more difficult to shoot at them. Cool. So we made a really cool improvement, but we can still make a another design improvement. Um, as you can see, the, the, the enemies, when they move down, we can see their eyes. But when they move up, we can still see their eyes. So it is always looking like if they were watching the if they were watching us like basically if they were uh, looking at the down part so in order to change this it is really easy we just have to create a new function and we'll call it oriented and we will just test if the velocity and we'll take y part is greater than zero so that means the enemy is going down then the eyes will be visible so we'll select body eyes that visible equal true and if it's not the case that means the the enemy is going up in this case we don't want to see his eyes so it will look like if he was watching up so body eyes not visible equal false and now we just need to call the oriented function in the physics process so each frame it will orient it the enemy correctly let's give it a try so now the enemy is still having eyes when he's looking down like when he's going down and when he's going up he we don't see his eyes anymore so it is more realistic and way better for the gameplay. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe and activate the bell so you get notified when the next tutorial is out. Also, you can ask any question, anything in the comments. You can give us feedback. It will be really appreciated. And see you in the next episode.